Hello, welcome to this lesson on Boolean algebraic axioms and duality principle. This is ITE 1812 Mathematics for IT. First, looking at the learning outcomes, by the end of this lesson, uh, you should be able to identify axioms in Boolean algebraic sets and apply Boolean algebraic axioms to prove basic theorems uh, in Boolean algebra and use duality principle to Boolean algebraic theorems. So these are the expected learning outcomes of this lesson. So we will start by uh, getting introduced to Boolean algebra. Uh, so the basis, uh, so this becomes the basis uh, for most of the modern computer and design of various electronic de devices. So Boolean algebra is integral part of it. So usually these circuits uh, in computers and uh, not just in computers, but uh, many other electronic uh, components and devices, uh, they deal with zeros and ones. That means Boolean values. Uh, usually the inputs are zeros and one and outputs are zeros and ones too. So they, they basically deal in Boolean values, zeros and ones. So this goes back to 1980, 1938, when uh, Claude Shannon uh, showed how basic rules of logic, uh, first introduced by George Boole in 1854. Uh, so that was in his the laws of thought. So the concept can be used to design circuits. So there's a set of rules uh, and these rules form the basis of Boolean algebra. So let's get on to the basics. Um, so it provides uh, operations uh, and the rules for working with zeros and ones. So the set including zero and one. Uh, so there could be many applications. Uh, it could be electronic or optical switches. They also uh, fall into this category and uh, they operate with the concept of Boolean uh, algebra as their basis. Uh, we can identify uh, three mostly used operations in Boolean algebra. First one is complement. Uh, so this is denoted uh, with a bar uh, and uh, it applies as complement of zero is one and complement of one is zero. So this is like taking the inverse. And then you have a Boolean sum. So this denotes to the O logic. Uh, so it is denoted by a plus sign or simply by the word O. Uh, and uh, it shows uh, when we take uh, combinations from zero and one, one plus one is one, one plus zero is one, zero plus one is also one and zero plus zero is zero. So this is the behavior of a O logic. So finally, uh, we have the product. Uh, so it is usually denoted by a dot or simply by the word and. So it denotes the and logic. So 1.1 1 .1 1 becomes 1. 1.0 1 is 0. 0 0.1 is 0. And 0.0, .0 .1 is also 0. So basically the behavior of an and logic involving Boolean values. So let's take a simple example first. Uh, so if you are asked to find the value of uh, 1.0, that is the product between 0 and 1, plus 0 plus 1 bar. So there are several operations uh, that you should uh, conduct here. So using definitions of complementation, Boolean sum, and Boolean product. So we can simplify this statement. So 0, 1.0 0 plus 0 plus 1 bar. 0 plus 1 means the O operation that becomes 1. Therefore, it becomes 1 bar. So the statement becomes 0 plus 1 bar. So we know that 1 bar is equal to 0. Therefore, the statement becomes 0 plus 0. And eventually, 
0 plus 0 is O operation. So eventually it becomes 0. So the eventual value of that statement becomes 0. Right, so let's uh, introduce the formal definition of a Boolean function. So we can identify the set, which includes 0 and 1. Then we can define b to the power n, which includes, which may include values from starting from x1, x2, up until xn, where all the x values in b uh, and the i value can range from 1 to n. So it is the set of all possible n tuples of zeros and 1, all the possible combinations. Uh, the variable x in this case is called the Boolean variable. So we are slowly introducing the terminology uh, used in Boolean algebra. Uh, if it assumes uh, values only from B, uh, that is if it is only possible values are zero and one. So this is the basis of it. So a function from Bn to B uh, is called a Boolean function of degree n because b to the power n, right? So we, that's how we define uh, a Boolean function and the definition for a Boolean variable, Boolean function, as well as the degree of a Boolean function. Right, straight away moving into an example. Uh, let's say we have a function f in xy, it is equal to xy, it is defined as xy, uh, from the set of ordered pairs of Boolean variables to the set 0, 1. So these are Boolean values. So this is a Boolean function of degree 2 uh, with uh, f11 one one is 0, f10 is 1, f01 one is 0, and f00 zero zero is equal to 0. So we can denote these values in a table. So we should call this a truth table. So we have the input values uh, x and y. So all the possible combinations of x and y should be denoted. And then we denote the value of the function at each combination. So c one and one is zero, it is provided. C one and zero is one, zero and one is zero, zero and zero is zero. So in this, Boolean function, the truth table can be represented as shown here. One more example. Uh, so you are asked to find the value of the Boolean function. So this time you have three variables, x, y, and z, x dot y plus z bar. So there are several operations that you want to do here. So we have the you have three variables, x, y, and z, z. And you have, uh, you have to define all the possible combinations of x, y, and z. And then you can take x dot y. So that is the end operation. So you can uh, list out uh, the result of end operation between x dot y. That's what you see in the fourth column. And then you also need z bar. So when you have z, you can easily find out z bar. So that's all the values representing z bar is given in the fifth column. So then what you have to do is you have x dot y and z bar separately. Then you have to perform an O operation plus sign uh, on those two separate entities. So when you do that, so basically you have column numbers four and five, and you perform an O operation on those two, and you get the values in the sixth column. And then eventually in the sixth column, you get the value for the overall function uh, given as one, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. So this is how it uh, generates the function x dot y plus z. That's an example of uh, a Boolean function. Now we move on to uh, the abstract, what we call the abstract definition of a Boolean algebra. 
So this is a generally useful concept. Uh, so the importance is that uh, once it is shown that a particular stu structure uh, is a blue Boolean algebra, then all the results established about Boolean algebras in general apply to this particular structure. So when you, you have to identify first that it's a um, Boolean algebra and it is in a particular structure. So the Boolean algebras uh, can be defined uh, in several ways, and we are going to look at them in the next slide. So in the most common way uh, is to specify the properties that operations must satisfy. So in the, in the next definition, we are going to show, uh, we will have these combinations. Right, so this is important definition about uh, on Boolean algebra. Uh, so, the facts are that uh, the Boolean algebra is a set B together with uh, two operations generally denoted uh, by plus and dot, that is uh, the O operation and the AND operation, uh, such that for all A and B uh, in B, capital B, uh, both A plus B and A dot B are also in B and the following properties will hold. Right, so first you have the commutative laws uh, where all, all of A and B are included in B. So A plus B is equal to B plus A that is commutative. Also for the product, A, A dot B is equal to B dot A. And then you, you have the associative law uh, for all A, B and C in B, uh, A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. So similarly for the product as well. And then you can define the distributive laws, also the identity laws. Okay, so I think these are pretty straightforward. Uh, even from previous lessons, you can understand uh, what these laws uh, refer to. So it is applicable in Boolean algebra. So there's one more law to be mentioned, uh, that is complement laws. Uh, so if you have A plus A bar, which will be equal to one, A dot A bar will be equal to zero. And uh, sometimes, uh, Boolean algebra may be represented by uh, a, a set of B plus dot bar zero and one. So in this case, we say zero is the zero element and one is the unit element and uh, A bar is the complement of A. So these are basically the definitions uh, of Boolean algebra and the related uh, elements. Now, for Boolean algebra, we introduced duality. So how do we arrive at the duality for Boolean algebra? So if you have a statement and you can arrive at the dual of that statement by interchanging the operations plus and dot, and by interchanging their identity elements zero and one in the original sense. So when you have an original statement, you interchange plus with uh, dot and zero with one, one with zero and so on, okay? So let's look at an example. So here in this example 10.4, you are given uh, two Boolean expressions and you are required to find the dual. So in part A, you see a one plus A dot B plus zero is equal to B and this is an Boolean expression and you are required to find the dual what do you do? You have to interchange plus with dot, dot with plus, and zero with one, and one with zero. So for the statement A, you get the dual as zero dot A plus B dot one. And for the other statement B, you get A plus B dot C is equal to A plus B dot A plus C. So it's uh, straightforward to get the dual of a Boolean expression. 
Now we move on to the identities of Boolean algebra. Uh, so we can identify many identities in Boolean algebra. So the below theorem, so the given theorem here uh, provides uh, identities for Boolean algebra. So first, the uniqueness of complement law. So if we have A and X for all A and X in B, uh, if A plus X is one and A dot X is zero, then X is equal to A bar, okay? So this is what we call the uniqueness of complement law. And of course, number two is uh, double complement law. That is for all A in B, A bar of bar is equal to A. That's what we call as double complement law. And then we can also identify uh, De Morgan's law, absorption law, complements of zero and one, which we already identified, and uh, the boundness law, as well as idempotent laws. Okay, so these are the set forth uh, uh, identities of Boolean algebra. And using this Boolean algebra, uh, we can look at some examples and how we uh, solve them. Uh, so we take the distributive law and try to uh, prove that distributive law is valid. So what, we, what do we have in distributive law? A dot B plus C is equal to A dot B plus A dot C. So let's go back to the truth table to prove this. So you have three Boolean variables, A, B, and C, and you need all the possible combinations for those three Boolean variables. So A, B, and C you have, and then you can get the required statements, which are firstly B plus C. You can see that in the fourth column. So that's an O operation. And you also need A dot B, which is an N operation product. And then you need A dot C. You see that in the sixth column. You also need A dot B plus C. Uh, you see that in the seventh column. And then you have A dot B plus A dot C. So an O operation between those two separate products. And then if you examine the last two columns, you will see that the truth values are all the same. In other words, the two columns are similar. That means the corresponding two statements are equal. So what are the corresponding two statements? They are A dot B plus C and A dot B plus A dot C. So those two statements are similar or equal. And then we can say that the distributive law is actually valid. So we took the, all the possible combinations of the three variables A, B, and C, and went for the truth table to prove that distributive law holds. You can actually try uh, for all these uh, combinations, all these identities and laws, and try to prove that uh, they are they are actually valid. So this is only one example. We took the uh, distributive law and prove that um, actually the distributive law is valid. Another example, uh, let's say we have uh, the what we call the absorption law, um, A plus B dot A, uh, using other identities of Boolean algebra. So this time we don't go to the truth table. Instead, we use the laws provided for us so we start from A plus B dot A. So using the identity law, you can first convert that statement to A plus B dot A plus zero. So that is the identity, introducing the identity law because you can replace A by A plus zero using identity law. And then in the next step, you can use distributive law and you will arrive at A plus B 
dot zero. In the next step, uh, you will use you can use bound and slow, which in which case the statement becomes a plus zero, and eventually using the identity law because a plus zero is equal to a that is identity law, the whole statement becomes a. So we have proved that left hand side a plus b dot a is actually equal to a. So how many laws did we use to prove that? Identity law, distributive law, and boundedness law, and eventually the identity law. So this is how you use these laws. Uh, you can break down, you can uh, simplify Boolean algebraic statements, and you can prove Boolean algebraic uh, expressions or statements using these laws provided. That brings us to the end of this lesson. In the next lesson, we will discuss disjunctive and conjunctive normal forms. Thank you. See you in the next lesson.